Good evening. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. It's Leela here. And I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about my experience this weekend with Dr. D. Martini. I'm so grateful to be here to talk to you. Uh, how was your weekend? I'm curious. It's a little rainy here in Denver right now. Uh, it's I've been in a conference room all weekend, about 30 hours almost. And um, I'm happy to be home. I'm happy to be here to share. Hello, Stephen. Welcome. Namaste, friend. So I'm going to share just a few takeaways, a few lessons uh, from the John D. Martini, Dr. John D. Martini event. Um, for those of you guys who have been following me for a little bit, you may know that Sebastian is my cat. <laughs> He's a little uh, funny guy. And uh, then this book is one, you may not be able to see it, it might be backwards, but this book is uh, a book that I recommend, the money book that I recommend, Ray, at in hospital all weekend. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sending you lots of love. Uh, so uh, here is Kitty. Here's Sebastian. He's, a, he's, he's such a, I love him. He's, a, he's such a sweetheart. But that's what's going on in monkey town here. Uh, so this book has really been valuable for me. Um, in particular, I'm going to show you what chapter four is because for those of you who aren't generating the wealth that you want, if you don't have the money you want or if money comes, money goes, you can't seem to hang on to it, um, here's what I'm going to recommend is this chapter. Chapter four is from self-worth to net worth. Okay. Ultimately, you receive exactly what you feel, no more, no less. What you feel you deserve. You receive exactly what you feel you deserve, no more, no less. So I don't know about you, but have, did you ever have your self-worth, like self-esteem kind of like lowered? <laughs> Like somebody at school, or your mom, or your dad, or your brother, or your ex-husband, or your ex-girlfriend, or whatever. Like somebody at some point brought, kind of told you you weren't good enough, you were a bad person, or something wasn't a perfect about you. And uh, the, then your self-worth can go down. And so, um, you know, that happened to me big time. And, uh, and, and a lot of it, here's the deal, a lot of it's self-criticism bringing the self down. So I, I was just really self-critical for years and I've been working on that. Are you self-critical? If you're self-critical, let's chat. I've got some ideas for you. But um, that's I'll, I'll, check, I'll tell you a little bit here in a second. But this book uh, really helped me understand the relationship by, uh, around money and service and, you know, show up and be of good service and money will flow. Uh, you know, don't be scared. You're always okay. It always works out. You know, just show up and be a service. If you serve people, uh, you'll be able to generate money. And then it also talks about, I'm working on saving now and, you know, investing and learning all sorts of th things about what to do with money when you get it so that you don't just like blow it. It doesn't just go away. So this book uh, is, you know, a really great resource. Okay. That's not what I learned <laughs> when I was there at the experience this weekend. Here's my first takeaway. My first takeaway is, and I want to ask you, like, I'm going to list seven things. Which of these seven do you, like, which of the top three, especially the first one I'm interested, what's your highest value? That's what I'm going to tell you. So um, one of the big takeaways is that if you don't spend your time doing the things of highest value in your life, low value things will take up that time. Like somebody's going to tell you what to do. Somebody's going to come in and throw something at you. So you got to deal with it. Some low priority thing, some email or something you got to do is going to take up your time. If you're not filling your time with high priority things. Okay. So that makes sense, right? Well, here's the deal. What are your high priorities? So we all have different priorities. We all have different values. So I'm going to list off seven values and ask you, like, what is your highest value? Where in your life do you spend the most time? That's how you know what you value the most. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example for me. I'll list them and I'll tell you what mine are. So first of all, there's mental. If you value your mental uh, you know, capacity, you know, your, maybe you're an intellect. Uh, 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 you know, somebody who researches all the times I was learning, uh, maybe you value your mental. So mental, uh, spiritual, so your spiritual journey, your spiritual, you know, activities that you do. Uh, spiritual, familial, so this is what do you spend your time doing? This will show you a value. Mental, spiritual, familial, so your family or your global family, your, you know. Um, uh, physical, so your body, so you can imagine that I value body quite a bit. You know, I like to take care of my body, my, my physical form. Uh, vocational is number five. 
So we got mental, spiritual, familial, uh, physical, vocational, so work. Uh, it's my highest value is work, vocational. I just really care about my career, really care about serving the world, really care about all the things that I do on trips. Everything you'll see me do is pretty much somehow, some way work related. And I love it. That's how I like to live my life. It's, you know, I work quite a bit, um, but I also take care of my body and take care of my mind. Uh, and that's what I did a lot of this weekend is taking really good care of my mind in a new way that's uh, I'm just really grateful for. So the next is financial. So how, how you know how important is it for wealth creation, wealth building, uh, you know, legacy building, financial financial legacy building, um, and then social. How important is it? You know, social life is social life up there. So if you're a mom and you have children, maybe familial will you be your top value. So if you're a mom and your top value is familial, and you keep being hard on yourself because you can't see all your friends, you got a few extra pounds on, and and you don't have all the money you want, but your highest value is your kids, and your kids are doing great. Stop being hard on yourself. That's your highest value. It's okay to not have all the things perfect in your life. So I'll list them again, and let me know what's your highest value. Mental, spiritual, familial, family, physical, vocational, career, financial, money, or social. Okay, so of those seven, which one is, I'd be interested, hey Brenda, I'd be interested in hearing, uh, what is your highest value? So my highest values are vocational, uh, um, uh, mental, uh, and um, spiritual, and then financial. And then, oh no, physical, spiritual, financial. It was interesting. Social was on the bottom. I thought for sure, sure. I thought for sure social would be um, higher up, but it wasn't as high up as I thought. Familial is low, my um, lower too. Like I don't have a. You won't see me like around a bunch of family and doing a bunch of family stuff. You'll see me a bunch of like work family stuff, like my work family people. Um, but I, you know, I'm not around family a whole bunch. It's just not as high a value for me. I just don't think about it. Somebody has. To, I kind of have to like remember. Like I don't kind of, I have to try to remind myself to call family. I don't have to remind myself to work. I love working. I don't have to remind myself to, to exercise. I love exercising, right? I don't have to remind myself to do my spiritual practices. I love doing my spiritual practices, right? I love doing uh, uh, even, you know, learning about financial stuff. You know, all of that, it's, you know, but social life um, and family life, uh, you know, they're just not as high a value. Now that will, that could change over time, right? So if you're in a place where you're building a business right now, you know, vocational, um, uh, um, uh, financial, maybe even spiritual, like it's your spiritual path when you're building your business. That's how I feel. It's this calling inside. I wake up with every day. I can't help it. I, I like wake up every day and I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I have to help people. I have to, you know, build, uh, you know, this, this business and help more people. It's like every day I wake up and I'm like, how can I help more people? And um, it's just a spiritual calling. So that's, it. you know, I can kind of wrap my business up. But, and also I teach the bowspring. I teach people how to get fit, how to have better posture, how to have a, a, a kind of mindset that keeps you healthier. And so I get to do my physical stuff, my mental stuff. I'm always learning. I'm always teaching, right? So it's a, it's a you know, back loop. When I teach, I get to learn. When I learn, I get to teach. Uh, so I get to wrap the mental, the spiritual, the, you know, the financial, and honestly, and the vocational, the social and familial, it's like my business. So my friend Elle Ingalls, I was just with her in Michigan. She's like family. My clients are like family. I have, you know, so many people in my life that I that are like family that are I've met through business. So you can do, you know, kind of one thing mostly with your time. So I'd ask you, what do you do with your time? What do you do most with your time? Mental, do you learn the most? Do you do more spiritual stuff? Uh, familial, physical, vocational, financial, social, whatever you do of those, know that that's your highest value for now. It can change, but that's your highest value for now. And don't be hard on yourself because you're not good at all the other things. Like I, I, you might want to get better at those things, but if they're not your highest value, like don't worry about it. Okay, don't worry about it. Like go do your highest value stuff, and then the rest of it will come and uh, fall into place. Now, here's what I want you to know. This is about manifestation right now. I'm going to talk about. 
if you are doing things, if you are doing actions in your day that are not aligned with your highest value, so if I'm doing actions in my day that are not aligned with, with my career and my mental growth and uh, my spiritual and financial growth, I'm probably not going to manifest. If I'm focused on my career and I'm of service on a mission from a spiritual spa space, boom, manifestation, boom, 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 opportunities galore, like doom, 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 almost every day. Right? But if I'm not focused on that, if I'm not doing activities in my day like that, then there's not as much manifestation. So I fill my calendar. Many of you know if you've seen me in person, you've seen my calendar. It's full, pretty much. I, it, it might say time off, uh, but I, I schedule the time off. Because if I'm not scheduling my time, so my, my, my calendar is full almost till the end of the year. If I'm not scheduling my time, and I'm you know starting to think about booking out things next year, which is super fun, I'm really planning the year, where well, I'm in a planning stage right now. Um, but if I don't if I don't fill that stuff up, something's going to fill it up. The universe is not going to let the you know the the way of life is not going to just fill it up with high priority things. I have to do that. If I don't fill it up with high priority things around building my business, around helping people, serving the world, becoming a better uh, human, not better, I don't want to say better, but just a more aligned human, <laughs> somebody's like really just me, no worry about anything else, that takes some work to kind of shed away the old, uh, you know, uh, let let the, the truth of the self reveal itself. This is, you know, like I said, this is a spiritual mission of mine to do this for myself and help others. Um, uh, and, and the point is, is figure out what your highest values are, mine or career right now in this part, in this time of my life right now, uh, revisit it every three months and be easy on yourself. Do more things in that and, and make sure, be easy on yourself. If you're not good at everything, then make sure you're starting to shift more of your activities away from the low value things and up toward the higher value things. Okay. So, do, so if you're a business owner and you don't have um, vocation or financial success up top or spiritual mission um, and you're trying to build a business and it's not successful and you're not manifesting and you can't figure out why and you feel so, I don't know what my purpose is, I just want a business, you may not be a business owner. You, it may not be for you, just to be real. Like we can chat and I'll tell you, like we can, I'll give you some ideas about how to make money, but... Like you gotta, you gotta care about your vocation. You gotta be care. Like I care about mastering my craft. I want to be a master at what I do. I don't have it all clear yet right now, but I want to be really, really good at it. <laughs> I don't even want to say good at it. I just want to know that it's all that I'm always on point. That I'm always able to show up fully and have infinite energy. That's my goal. So that was the first part, the first thing. So I hope that was inspiring for you. And I, I'm, like I said, I'm really curious. What are your highest values? Um, the, so the second thing is there's no such thing as positive or negative, good or bad, right or wrong. Right? You may have heard that. But here's the deal. If you actually go through your brain, your thoughts, we'll say, we'll say your thoughts, you'll notice there are things that don't, that, that you're kind of calling positive or negative, good or bad, right or wrong. Maybe the, maybe there's a politician or a person in your life from the past or some experience that was like very hurtful and you're calling it good or bad, positive or negative, right or wrong. Okay. Here's the deal. This is fascinating, friends. I'm like so happy to share this. You know, I, I don't have time to go through the whole thing because it takes some time to do it, but this is what I did all weekend is we went into a particular thought, a particular set of thoughts about a person that were judgments. This person's great about this thing, this things, these traits about this person are really awesome, or this person does this really awesome things. And then this person's like really horrible. They do it's horrible things. So we went into this judgment place of uh, looking at a person, looking at a situation maybe. And how do you know which situation to look at? Well, any situation that's charged. So if there's emotion around it, you get sad, mad, irritated, frustrated, angry, you don't like that person, you want to stay away from that person, or you like really want to be around that person, you just wish they'd come back, or you could be close to them. Any of that charge, 
you know there's a false sense, there's judgment, there's judgment going on. There's a false sense of positive or negative, good or bad, right or wrong. Okay? And there's no such thing. Everything just is neutralized. It's only the perception, the judgment that makes something good, bad, right, wrong, right? Positive, negative. So if you think there's a person in your life who's just grand and wonderful, like we'll just say the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama has just as much negative as he does positive. Nobody is all enlightened. Nobody is all rainbows and butterflies and radiance and bright and love and, well, love, yes. Everybody is love once you get to that point. But, you know, not everybody's always positive. What's up, Chad? So good to see you. Namaste, my friend. Um, so what you can do, so if you have a charge, and this is, this is something that, you know, the John, uh, the Dr. John, John Demartini method, the Demartini method you go through, and you look at each thought, the negative thing you thought about person. So, for example, many of you guys may know, but I grew up in what I would call a challenging home. Now, uh, my mother presented a lot of challenges to me, and uh, I was quite irritated and angry at her for a long time. Then I've done a bunch of work on the forgiveness. I've gone through therapy. I've um, you d done this Byron Katie work that's amazing. Really came to a place of forgiveness. Here's the deal, though. She can still, uh, let me take that back. I can still get triggered by her. There's a, still a charge around my relationship with my mother, or there was before this weekend. So I want to ask you, is there a charge in your life with anybody? And if there is, do this, do some work, or let's chatter. You know, I'm, I'm not an expert in this method yet, but um, I'm going to use it on the daily until I have no stories in here, nothing that's going to charge me. There's no reason for it. Here's the reason. Here's the here's the deal. The reason it's there's a charge is because it's an incomplete part. It's an incomplete story. You're not seeing. I wasn't seeing the whole story, and not just the whole story between you and the person. So between me and my mother, for example, but the whole story about what was going on in life as a whole, my life at the time and her life at the time. The whole story. Once you see the whole story. Once you really go back there and do the, I mean, it takes some work. I mean, we sat there for hours, hours, like 12 hours. I worked on my mom, I think. I don't know if it was 12, but it was a lot. This one little thing. And what was fascinating is that once you come to a place of seeing the whole story, once I came to a place of really seeing the whole story, I realized how grateful I was. And then I cried. Little tear, well, got a little teary eye. You know, one of those. <laughs> Did that over and over and over. <laughs> and here's what that is. Do you know what that tear is? Do you know what that? It's grace. I learned all this from uh, D. Martini this weekend, and so I'm just sharing what I learned, and and it's for reals. It's amazing. I'm like, whoo. We're not in moments of grace all the time. We're not a fully conscious all the time. We're not enlightened all the time, but we have moments of it where we feel that love, pure love and gratitude. And that's what I got to experience this weekend around my mother and around these stories that I had. And many of you guys may have done story, like work around your stories. I hear it. I get it. I have to, the forgiveness stuff. And yet, if there's still an ability within you to be charged by something either negatively or Say you see something, you're like, you think that person's amazing. You're in fact, you know, in a sense of infatuation, like they're so much prettier. They're so much, you know, they dress better. They're smarter. They have more money, like whatever it is. That charge of feeling less than that person, that person's better than you. In some way, they have something you want that you don't have. Right? It's an incomplete story. You have exactly what they have right then, right there. You just can't see it. And you may not be able to see the form yet of where it is. That's what's cool. That's what's cool about this method, what we did this weekend. I'm blown away. I've done so much inner work, so much presencing, um, so much processing. Uh, how many of you guys, like, have you, give me some hearts or some happy faces or, like, those, like, the happy faces crack me up. If you've done, like, a lot of inner work and you can still get charged up. And you always will. We always will. 
But what I'll say is that there's going to be like one person maybe, or like a couple people or situations like driving or the president. There's something that still charges you. It's only because there's something within you that you're not owning, right? I wasn't owning things about, I know this stuff, but we went deep. Lots of questions, lots of perspectives. We went a ring around the rosy, the mind, inside, outside, upside down, and the infinity sign and all the way around. When you see, I mean, the truth of everything, you realize it's all love. Thank you for all the hearts. I love you, baby. Helena, Terry, oh, Lisa, Lisa, so good to see you. So good to see you. Once we own our stories, once we are willing to do the work to go into them, um, we start to realize the whole story. There's this moment of pure grace, pure love, gratitude, tears come. And that's the truth of everything. Everything's happening for you. You wouldn't be here otherwise. We would not be here if it wasn't all happening for us. Everything is pure love. Sometimes because our visual, all we see, and, you know, this emotional thing we got going on, we only see part of the story. What if you could see the whole story and release for good any sort of triggers around any sort of situation, around any sort of person? And more importantly, what if all of that releasing, moving it away, getting out that gunk within your brain, within your thoughts, it's not needed anymore. What if all of that is the thing that's getting in the way of that success that you want, right? Or that love life that you want, or losing that the extra weight that's been hard, or getting healthier. Uh, I'll probably share much more. I could go on and on. I could see I've been on for a little over 20 minutes. Um, you know, Dr. Martini is an academic, and I really resonate with that. I love teaching. I love speaking uh, about uh, all sorts of stuff. I love speaking about business and the body and um, perspective. And I think I'm going to, um, let me step back. I declare <laughs> that I'm going to be more brave on my videos and speak. I know you may think I speak truth already, but I'm going to speak even more uh, truth, universal truth, my truth. Um, and I don't expect you to have my truth, but I do expect you to check in with yourself and ask yourself, what is your truth? every day because if you're not if i'm not somebody else's truth is going to come in if you're not asking yourself what your truth is somebody else's truth is going to come in so don't let that happen every day check in what do i believe what is my truth what is my highest value what stories are triggering me where am i blocking myself am i willing to do the work am i willing to go in and ask and really take accountability full on accountability for self for my experience in life hell to the yeah boom, 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 boom. so if you want some help manifesting your life if you really think you're a business owner i'm honestly not everybody's going to be a business owner i know there's a lot of people out there want to be business owners i get it not everybody is you got to really care you got to work you got to work that's what i'm saying you got to work um not everybody values work as the high you know i've been a um you know tough on my clients and you know, inspirational to people and all the things to try to help them. And many of them I have helped, but I can't, I haven't been able to help every single person I've tried to inspire. And what I realize is because their highest value isn't my highest value. I can't inspire somebody to build a business like I want to build a business if their vocation and financial success is, on, is low on the values. They need to go get a job or something. I don't know what they got to do, but if you don't want to make money and build a business, I, I can't, I can't, you know, I'm probably not your person to, to work with, right? If you don't want to get physically fit and be really present and feel good in your body, feel not good, but feel mm, light and vibrant and energized and you don't need that much sleep and you can have, you know, do all sorts of, you know, uh, be flexible and strong and all of that. If that's not your thing, if you aren't into feeling fit, that's okay. Right? If you want to stay home and you want to cook and you want to have the family stuff and you want to have social life, that's fine. I love that. I love people like that because then I can go over there and they feed me. It's like so yummy and they give me hugs and like amazing stuff. 
And then I help them make money. <laughs> right? So this is, to me, a really fascinating conversation. If you're interested in chatting with me, I'd love to chat with you about your highest values. If they're in that vocational wealth creation, you know, physical form, physical health realm, I'm your girl, you know, and if, if you're wanting to be better in like socially socializing and um, uh, even romantic relationships and um, family, how to raise kids, I'm not your girl. You got to go someone else. You got to go someone else. <laughs> but if you need somebody, I got people for you because uh, I work with a lot of clients who are building businesses that help people. They're very service leaders, mission driven, heart centered, you know, speakers, really beautiful souls, yoga teachers, healers. You know, people that are um, helping people shift their mindset, women, women empowering women, um, all of this. So um, I'm really inspired by all of all of my clients and all of the people I get to work with and all the people's different values. I'm really inspired by all of that. So if you need help in any area, I probably know somebody. So if you're like my, I got rheumatoid arthritis, I'm like, I got someone for you. Uh, if you need, you know, a cleanse or you know, if you need to know, oh, I know, like these these doulas, these women who bring babies into the world. Woo! I am so impressed with them. That is not my thing. I am not going to stay in there with all that blood. Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope this was helpful. If you need help intentionally building your life, I'm here for you. I'm intentionally building mine. So uh, let's uh, build together, tell some truth, make some money, help some people and sleep well at night. Take care of ourselves. Namaste, my friend. So many blessings to you. Remember, all is love and gratitude brings love.